<laughs> what are we doing today, Mike? What's up, Carl? It seems you found me. Yes, sir, I did. Yes, sir. I'm always in my hole. What you got going on here? Anyway, so we're going to put together this uh, little stage two large street port for one of our customers here. All right, we have rotor one and rotor two here. All right, I've already cut all the seals and everything for this, and uh, right now I was just straightening all the corners so I can put the apex seals in. Um, so we have our apex seals here, We're all laid out. Now, if you notice, the tip's been glued on here. It's mainly just to make sure that we have good fit. Also, another thing is you can check, you can put your apex seals in and just check to make sure that you don't have any binding or anything. Uh, also, it holds the tip in place as you're assembling the motor, makes it much simpler and easier. Also, you can't mistakenly put it in upside down. So you wanna make sure these tips here sit upward because that's how the springs sit on them. Oops. Go. They sit just like that. So that center spring sits in the first groove and the longer one sits in the back. So you want to make sure you put those in correctly. Also, like I said, just makes it easier to put them in. Easy stuff. Now, and of course, when you glue it, really doesn't matter which direction you do it. Uh, a lot of people that do like bit large bridge ports, stuff like that, will put this towards the inside on both sides, just to make sure that, you know, the bridge is quite large, um, that this isn't riding on that bridge. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just put that there. And we're gonna go ahead and start putting our seals in. I'm gonna go ahead and slide that in. So you got your small, your long one in there first, and you put your short one in. Now you can kind of just, yeah, you know, make sure that it moves freely and easy, yeah, and it holds it in place. There we go. We'll do our next one here. There we go, and you can see no binding. I mean, I've already marked them to check the feeler gauge on the groove, so. Everything's already ship shape, but you just get to, you know, it makes you feel a little bit better. It gives you a warm, fuzzy feeling when you're putting the motor together and everything goes together nice and smooth. And obviously keep counting how many seals you got. There we go. You know, sometimes the glue on this side can be a little finicky, but I've already mic'd it all the way to the edge, so it's, it's good. Right. But you just use basic super glue and just glue the edge right there across. There you go. And if you feel, you can take like a little scotch bright, just take that little extra residue off, but it'll burn off and they'll snap free as soon as you go to spin the motor or start the motor. Um, and uh, some of them will just pop free on their own when you go to rotate it afterwards. So it's not that big a deal. That's one. And then you just rinse and repeat on the rear. Thanks. That's just one rendering. Right Four seats. 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 are all set to go. Now we're going to go ahead and stack this motor. Uh, we've got our front plate already set out here. We've got a couple clean lines here. I mean, putting these together, it's, it's pretty hard to get all the RTV off if you're doing it or if you're using uh, Alamar or anything else. I mean, you're not going to get it all out, but try to get most of it if you can. You know, you don't want to have it too much in the uh, in the cooling system. So I'm just kind of just do a light roundabout, a clean rag. There we go. And then 
then just clean your RTV surface area from your legs. Yeah, easy. Now, I'm gonna grab this RTV right behind you, Carl. We're just gonna come over here and yeah, you ain't gotta get too crazy with this. Some people get a little overzealous with putting it on. You really don't need that much. Because you're gonna, I always take off the excess anyway. You don't want a bunch of your oil pan floating around. I've had motors come in where it's just a pound of RTV literally in the, uh, on the pickup tube, clogging the pickup tube. But we're gonna go through and trim off as much as we can of that prior. All right. All right, unfortunately, I don't know where my bottles are that I normally use. i just throw a little bit of ATF in there. Or assembly lube, either is fine, to be honest. But there's enough petroleum jelly on there as well. I mainly just do this for the side seals. So, and we've already lubed our bearing, so. Now, come over here, we're gonna grab rotor one. Make sure you grab rotor one. I've actually had people screw that up when they bring me a motor, and hey, what's wrong with it? Start smoking like crazy because the O-rings are in the wrong direction. Okay, so now, I'm gonna go ahead. And I always start with the rotor up, so this way on the first rotor. And you just walk a rubber band up. Nice and easy. Boom. There's your rotor. So it's much easier than because normally you would have to put your apex seals in after you drop the rotor. You'd have to slide them in and then put your springs in and then push them down. Well, if one of these is misaligned on the bottom, you gotta pull the rotor back out and fix it all. This way, they're all aligned. Literally drop it in and simple rubber band. Keep bags of them everywhere. And then our bearings are already lubed. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this in here, gently. And we're just gonna align it. Get in there and get your natural bore. Make sure it's nice and smooth. And I come up a little and I turn a little to the right. I'll show you why. Grab a clean rag here. So now it's gonna sit like that. Now our rotor's all the way in. Easy enough. Come in here, same deal. Don't need to get too crazy. Remember, any extra that squeezes out, you're gonna have to kind of dig, go in and dig it out afterwards. It's like icing on a cake. All right, this is a little more sticky and gets everywhere, and for some reason, it always ends up all over my pants. All right. Now, we're gonna grab our center plate. So you're gonna look at it. So this right here, this one's gonna go downward. We're gonna go ahead and grab our rag here. Find a clean spot. And just clean off all our extra here as much as possible. All right, so plate's all kind of cleaned up. Got as much RTV out of the port, out of the uh, holes as possible. Or the petroleum jelly out of the holes. And make sure our seals are all intact. Everything looks good. Apex seals are pushed down. You wanna make sure that they're down below or even with the housing before you do this. And make sure all your seals are in place and that your oil control rings didn't pop up. All right. Now you gotta be gentle and you walk it. Right on. Done. Center plate's in. Now again, 
RTV our legs. It's so much easier when the rotors are already assembled completely. It literally takes like an hour to stack your motor. It's less stress too. You know, I just find when everything goes together nice and smoothly, everything's already pre-cleaned, all your seals are in. It's less of a rush to do this. And I find it goes a lot smoother. You know, you don't want to be stressed out doing this because then, you know, stuff happens or something falls out, something doesn't do right. Maybe you, you miss something, you know, you, you, as you were doing it because you're too frustrated dealing with something else. At that point, if I ever have an issue like that, I just stop take everything apart wherever I'm at and just have it, send it back into cleaning, have them re-clean it and start over. All right, so now I am using a one piece or one uh, solid one piece dowel in here. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this bottom dowel pin out and this will become our top one. So what we're going to do here, we've got our next housing here. I'm gonna go ahead and get our dowel pin. Now this one's only a stage, um, stage two large street port. Just has one extra dowel or one piece dowel. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in. Good to go. Now we're gonna go ahead and take the one that we had on the. I was already in the other one. Put that in this one, and we'll come over here. And typically I only do one at a time because you don't want to fight the dowel pins as you're putting it together. Because what will end up happening is you'll just, you know, you'll push one down too far the other and it just gets stuck and it's just a pain. So put that one in. And even if you're doing two, two uh, one piece dowels, do one at a time. So put one all the way in, then put the other one halfway into here, then work it in, get it down, then put the other one in. It's much easier and less pain. So right now we're gonna do the same thing we normally do. Check to make sure all our O-rings are in place, and they are, and then drop, boom, easy peasy. You know, you don't want to have to force anything. If you got to force it, something's wrong. So I see people using hammers and tapping and banging and stuff, then you should have checked it before you put it together. All right, and we've already put lube on these housings. So we'll go ahead and throw a little more ATF in here. You ain't gonna get too crazy with it. Here we go. All right, next. Now remember I said before, the rotor is up all the way to the top. Now it's down, because this is a 180 degree split on a two rotor. Push, push, push those in. Make sure, guide them down nice and easy. There we go. We're gonna work it. Now this one's a little bit tighter because remember the E-shaft is in it. There we go. So now we're almost all the way down. We'll go ahead and work that a little bit more. Here we go. You don't wanna take this off prematurely because then the apex seal sometimes will slide up. So we're gonna go ahead and just pop that and boom. Second rotor's in. Go and push your apex seals down all the way. Make sure that they're in all the way. Okay. And yeah, sometimes I just go over here and just throw a little, a little bit of petroleum gel in the tubes here. And mainly what this is for is when you go to put the back plate on, Sometimes when you get a push or anything like that, or you move or you jostle it, this is not for lubrication. I do this mainly because if that, if the super glue does break, there is spring pressure behind here. It will shoot that corner out. All right. Now we seal the back half. So and we'll do a little more ATF. It's mainly just to go onto the, uh, here and onto the gear there we go until the motor you know we're going to prime the motor anyway with oil before we fire it up so but there's that rear plate let me check our o-rings again o-rings look good bearings already lubed e-shaft is lubed 
and very gently. Drop. That's it for that. Now we're gonna go ahead and throw our tension bolts in, get it torqued down. We're gonna go ahead and get these studs in here. We've already prepped them all, put them all in. Got one left here. And I go ahead and just run them all in by hand. First, you wanna make sure you don't mess up the threads, make sure there's nothing in there. I mean, obviously we've already gone through cleaning with it and we've already checked the threads, but you never know. You just don't wanna run them in with something. We did our trusty dusty torque wrench here. And we're gonna do three steps up to 30. Two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The last step, we hit 30 and just go around just to double check, make sure. And grab. Now I've already put the rear stationary gear in with the ring and a little bit of RTV around the edge on that one. I usually do the rear main seal last just because it's easier with it not being in there. It's easier to put in. And then I just do a little bit of RTV around the seal here. Because these are press fit. And I mean, I have seen sometimes where if uh, stationary gear might just be massively worn out or something, that it works its way back. So we just try to glue it in with a little bit of RTV. Just a nice film. You don't have to get crazy with it. Go ahead and just. Drop that down like that. Just evenly press. The nice part is it also helps you just put it in. You can put it in by hand. All right, now we can get our keyway. So now we take the one bolt we put in here out that was holding the front stack on, or the front bearing in. We'll go ahead and just pop that out of there. And then we're gonna grab, got our bearing in there already. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab a skosh of lube here for that bearing. I'm gonna go ahead and grab our counterweight here. I like to just give it a good spin. Put the lube in there. Boom. Now, for testing purposes, I don't put the chain on, obviously, because we're going to check our end play here. Boom, boom. Get the keyway. Slippery. Not that hurt much. There we go. Get our front bolt in there. Grab my 19. This one I will need your help with, kinda. Stand on it. Yeah, so, yeah. But, I mean, I just do a light little, just to get it close. I mean, we're still gonna check it anyway, so. But, all right, so we got that on there now. I'm gonna go ahead and put that this way. That. Grab our half inch torque wrench here, which is already set to 200. All right, so it, it, it's a common mistake, and I've had a few motors this way, where a lot of older builders don't realize that the REW motor is actually torqued to 200 foot pounds of torque on the crank bolt. The older motors typically went to 80, 90 foot pounds on the front snout. That's an issue because we've had a couple cars come in just for, you know, ready to tune and the snap comes loose. Uh, with that being said, it started, started leaking oil out the front and then we got a crank, crank sensor fault. Uh, good thing it did because it shut the motor off. Okay, so moving on, 
Now we're just gonna spin this puppy over real quick. Ooh. There we go. Now, we're gonna go ahead, and this is set to 200 foot pounds. Carl, stand over there. Go, nice and easy. A little more. There we go. 202. Now, go ahead and back that out. That to 90. Now, you don't really have a lot of room on here to set your dial indicator and whatnot, so that's why I leave the oil pump off. Now, some people are like, oh, you shouldn't use a pry bar to check in play or float. It can be end play or it could be called float. Either one you choose, same thing. Now, this is true in some cases. There's uh, two ways you can do this. Now, what I'll typically do is you just take your pry bar and you just put it right here like this and you let it rest right on that, uh, that little ridge right there in the casting. One finger, all right, one finger like this. All right, you ready? One finger. That's 2,000. One finger. Now, you can, the other way of doing it is pushing up from the bottom on the E-shaft. Ready? There you go. So we're at two inches, showing roughly about two and a quarter, which is perfectly fine for this matter. It's pretty much a stock wind turbine. You can do a little more, it's up to the builder's preference. So, but that is perfectly within spec. Now, you just put your oil pump on, put all your goodies back on, put your gasket on, and seal up the rest of the matter. That's pretty much it. Cool. All right, guys, take it easy.